us at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales, a curated 5e Dungeons & Dragons adventure set in the tales of the Yawning Portal campaign module by Wizards of the Coast. Previously on Tavern Tales, we've made it through the spinning corridor, only to find figures from Thesis's past. Are they friend or foe? And can Kyle get an accent right? Come sit down and drink with the enemy, raise a glass and toast to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So come sit down and laugh with the enemy, raise a glass and sing to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. Users may not be remembering me, but I was Burkett, your footman, when you were just a little one. I remember. Hello. You don't seem like you're footmaning anymore. Change of profession? It's nice to see you again. You look... Eh, I wasn't going to say well, but uh, you look lo- you look like you look... No, I gotta <laughs> tell you, I've fallen on hard times. That's too bad. I mean, you wouldn't be stuck in this dungeon if you hadn't. I is got that what this is? Gets to admit. Is that what this is? This is a dungeon? Yeah. Sorry, didn't make you as acquaintances. Name's Burkett, former footman of Thesis Phases. Her parents looked after young Miss. I was the footman for her father, King Tony. <laughs> It's true. He was the best. He always got me cookies. And when I snuck out of bed, he didn't tell my mother. Uh, Snarla, Snarla, come out. I know them. Uh, haven't been introduced to you two yet. That was a lot that just happened. It is very nice to meet you, I think, based on what I heard. I am Zuvis Muvda, and I am traveling with these individuals trying to assist those in this dungeon while we search for artifacts. The name's Vulcan, and I must say you have the patience of a saint to have raised, and Vulcan goes with air quotes, young miss for that period of time. I was let go not much after young miss died, and I left employ on King Tony to pursue other things. That's how I met Snarla. Snarla, you coming out? And the door opens, and... It is Snarla, but she is beautiful. What does she look like? Her hair is perfect. Is she a human? She is human. Her hair is big, 80s, New Jersey, sure, <laughs> lots of hairspray volume. I'm picturing uh, Peggy from uh, Married yes. with Children. I was picturing Fran. Fran Dresser? Yeah. yeah. Both are the same. She was from Queens, though. True. And... I don't know, why don't we describe the rest of what Snarla looks like? Is she tall? Is she short? Is she round? Is she... She's wearing capri pants that have a leopard pot. <laughs> she sprite. definitely is wearing leopard capri pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Has to. And pumps. Yeah. High heels. She's got nails that are done. Exceptional. She is surprisingly tall. Of course. And quite thin. So like six foot three mm-hmm. and a buck twenty. Yeah. Okay. This is Thesis, or this is uh, Zuvis is kind of woman. Yep. Massive push up bra. Oh, yeah. And like, probably water padding as well. Yeah. A lot of highlighting, low lighting, yep. makeup. I they described the whole character. She's done. You're, yeah. What's her face look like? Middle aged. Okay. Nah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. It doesn't fit with your <laughs> visual representation of her. No, that was Zuvis's. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Oh. Yeah. No, it's. Does she look more like Fran Drescher or more like Peggy? More like Peggy. Okay. I, I can picture that. I'm so glad you guys found each other and fell in love. <laughs> she takes Burkett's hand. It does seem to be, in fact, the case. 
And she says, this is my husband, Burkett. You know him already? Oh, yeah. That's an odd thing, Thesis. But I will tell you, Snarla is a wizard and was quite an adept, skilled wizard when you knew her. She says, so are you, you know, trapped down here too, somewhere off to the left or something? You got your own suite because this is ours and we're quite happy. And you can see into the room that she's just stepped through that unlike the room that you are currently in, that place is beautifully decorated. The floor is covered with fine rugs, the walls hanging with erotic tapestries, which I will not describe further and just allow you to picture in your mind what that means. And shimmering curtains. The ceiling has an intricate mosaic depicting a summer sky dotted with fleecy clouds. And in the northeast corner is a large and lavishly covered bed strewn with cushions. Next to it on a low table is a buffet of sweetmeats, cakes, and other delicious looking comestibles. And in the northwest corner of the room is a brass bound oak chest. There, I've done my due diligence to the written part of this. As Snarla says... So, you're stuck here? Aren't you? Just visiting. Birkin and I have been tasked with taking down all of the foods and disgusting fish heads to feed the Kelpies and everything in the terrarium on Fridays. Oh, yeah. Nice terrarium. Not at all destroyed now. That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> Are you down there somewhere? Just visiting a friend. They point to eat like themselves. Oh no, each no, other. no, no, no! Uh, Zuvis knows people. We don't get many other um two-legged talkers. <laughs> the Kelpies are much further than dragging people to the to the death, and everything in the terrarium not really conversant. Yes. We found that out, although I did have some nice conversations with a couple individuals in the terrarium. You like the crayfish? Yes, they were very entertaining. The scorpions, unfortunately, not so much. So you're not new members of the dungeon, you're the dungeon, she puts in quotation marks, because I'm not even sure, too, too sure that that's what it is. You're adventurers? Think of it as us having what some would call a guest pass into the dungeon. I like your brain. <laughs> I don't know what that means, says Burkett, very formally. Thesis is going to attempt to persuade them that we're allowed to go wherever we want. All right. <laughs> Do you not trust them? No. Okay. I don't trust anyone that's like inbound service to Karaptis. I mean, why would you? Yeah, we're just doing an informal inspection of the different aspects of the dungeon. That's interesting. We haven't had nothing like that in a lengthy bit of time we've been here. Yeah, we were just checking to see how hard it is to actually get to all of the different artifacts throughout the dungeon. So you can actually go everywhere? Because we can't get much to the right after we leave the spiral and tub tube. Really? And Burkett says, that was a really nice dive that you made down the corridor. Ah. Uh. You saw that, did you? Yes, that was very, very skillful. Thank you. I appreciate you for noticing. Your friends, not so much. I would agree. You should have seen some of the other passes they've gone through and what they've done. So you take care of parts of the dungeon. That's our task, yeah. How'd you get stuck here doing that? Don't have a single memory of it. I got a bunch of gaps in my memory, which is really frustrating me. Bucket here's got the same ones. We didn't even really know each other before we ended up in the dungeon. Damn it. Were you captured from the forest? Something else happened that night and I don't like bringing it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it should be because it was your watch that night and I got grabbed on it. It's true. How can I make it up for you? You can find a way to get us out of this place. We'll go and ask Karaptis ourselves. Who? Your boss. We I don't have no boss. Why do you stay? You just can't leave? Exactly. Food gets delivered? No. Yeah. If you don't have a boss, how do you know what to do with the food? We just got memories that, of knowledge of that, but we don't know where it came from. Interesting. 
It almost seems like a magical geas, but I'm not skilled in that particular area of memory magic. I'm more of an illusionist. Interesting. Can I check if they're being truthful? Sure. Roll an insight check. Do 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 do. Bing. <laughs> yeah, you you are just as sure or unsure as you were before you rolled that die. Oh, 14. Yeah. You say you deal with illusions. How permanent are the durations of these illusions? That varies. Well, I'm just thinking because the Kelpies, they want to be humans. Mm-hmm. Kelpies are more interested at this point in getting back to Triton Lands and experiencing the yeah. we are not hunted as a delicacy. We'll find them. <laughs> but that was a good point. Mm-hmm. I, I tried. Yeah, you did. In fact, you know what? You can have a blue gem. Hey, that's pretty good. Do you know anything that might help us as we um, test the defenses of this location? So they tell you yep. about how they go down and feed the terrarium Mm -hmm. and how they feed the Kelpies and they cannot go anywhere but those two spots. Okay. But they don't have any memories as to how they got here. Yeah. Who Karaptis is. Yeah. Why they're here. But they know what they need to do while they're here. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. But Burkett, he's used to being given orders and he quite likes the work. Doesn't seem like it's hard work. It's once per week. Yeah, well, yeah, ta- he, he gets to chat with the Kelpies. He's got a good rapport and relationship with them. And none of them, neither of them like going down to the terrarium. It is very awkward and hard for them to get to the terrarium. Right. Because they have to have these amulets out to ward off the uh, ghouls. And they have to have special shoes that they have to wear to walk past the slippery floor. But they tell you and explain to you the whole process. They don't know anything about the floating room or Sir Bluto. They don't know anything about any of those pieces. And they have uh, they just skirt past the Gyno Sphinx. Although occasionally Snarlow will engage the Gyno Sphinx in idle, idle conversation. Was there any other way out from here? Well, in the area you're in? No, just these two rooms and that's it. And then you'd have to go back down the spinny corridor, which would lead you to allow you to go to the right which is another area of the dungeon that you haven't experienced yet down this northern corridor. So we we know where one of the things is, two of the things. We know where a black razor is, and we know where... You just know where the one is. Oh, just the one? You guys chat for about an hour, because these they're just two humans that are perfectly content to converse with you guys. And it is nice that this not combat-oriented, much like it kind of was with Sir Bluto's men. And... I need everyone to make perception checks. And for anyone who'd like to make an arcana check, you may make one of those as well. How did you do? Nine on perception, but... Nothing there. But arcana, I got a 22. Okay. I just 13 on perception. 19 on perception and 14 on arcana. All right, Zuvis moved out. You have pierced the illusions or at least some of the illusion of Snarla, the room beyond that it described so gorgeously eloquently, at one point you're able to discern that the bed, that beautiful round bed, is in fact just straw on a pallet. Hmm. And most of what you see that has any amount of nice quality is potentially just illusion. But the other two of you don't particularly notice those things. Is there a particular reason why you have chosen to use an illusion spell on your quarters? Yeah, I mean, kind of rude to bring it up, but nonetheless, we weren't given much. And uh, it makes you feel a little bit better when everything you got in front of you is is nicer to look at, softer to the touch. Mm. It is understandable, and I get it. While you were redecorating that room, did you ever come across anything interesting, artifact-like? Nope, there's just a whole bunch of money in the trunk. Hmm. Need money, though. I don't know what to do next. (laughs) I mean, if they don't know 
about Karaptis or yeah. anything else. So here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to go and speak with the manager of the dungeon and I'm going to go and convince him that you've done your job really well and want to leave. Is that what you want with that chunk of money? You know, we'd really appreciate it if you were to go out of your way and find us an opportunity to get out of this place. I'm sure Snala and I would really like getting a chance to uh, explore what we got here in an area where we're not deficient in memory and maybe not just trapped together in what could be a loveless marriage that only exists because it's been planted in our minds. Are you telling me that you think that this is just made up? I didn't want to say nothing. Well, I'll never. That was really hard, guys. I don't know. Yeah, but you did it really well. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> So we'll be back when we got to let you know how things go. Okay. Is there any curiosity on your part about the illusions? Yes. Okay. Do you want to do anything about that? Would you mind as a favor to us attempting to get you out, breaking your illusion so we can just quickly inspect the room? I don't know. She has this like, pained look across her face like she doesn't want to reveal just how bad things are so you might need to persuade her in some capacity i understand that you would like to maintain certain appearances of the way you live and you're very proud of what you've created i have no judgment of the way it looked before you are obviously very talented in your illusion work and it is very impressive and i look forward to seeing the way you do your magic and seeing it firsthand. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. You may you may make your check with advantage. Oh, good. That's great because just as it <laughs> fell out of Paige's hand, it was a one. <laughs> so this one better come up no. better. Huh. Oh. 18. It's pretty good. What's your persuasion skill? Plus eight. Mm-hmm. Why don't you roll with advantage as well since you know them both and they trust and like you. I totally agree with Zuvis. We should totally see how it really looks so we can be super impressed with your abilities. She's All right, like, 13. That's pretty good. I know. She's, could be better. I know. But even if Zuvis over here spent his flash of genius, it wouldn't get you to the same number that Zubis already has. Zubis could use Flash of Genius on theirs. That's true. So you're at an 18. Do you want to use Flash of Genius? No. Okay. So an 18 is still enough for her to say, okay, do you want me to take him down all of them? If you wouldn't mind. This isn't worth my while. This is a lot of work. And even Burkett looks like, ooh. But just think, if you allow us to see your work, it will assist us in our inspection of the dungeon and getting you out of here and you might not have to look at this room ever again okay perfect i love that the whole thing starts coming down but it comes down faster than i think she was expecting it to (laughs) so the ceiling is just a normal ceiling in the dungeon there's nothing special there there are no erotic tapestries at all that is entirely illusion and you're pretty sure you now have seen Burkett's naked butt in thread more than you really needed to (laughs) ever see it. The curtains, not real at all. Even the food stuff, the beautiful platter of laid out sweetmeats and whatnot is not actually good food at all. It is thick, pasty gruel and, I don't know, animal crackers. Like, not delicious stuff set out there. Animal crackers are delicious, sir. (laughs) Stale animal crackers. I should not have said animal crackers. That just soggy. ever no, is none of it, it so it's all dry, stale rations and animal crackers. <laughs> why not? And the bed is a pallet with dry rushes on it. The room itself falls to shambles. You can see an end. Part of that, what it what it initially attra- attracts you is these sigils that suddenly appear in corners of the walls, but you don't get a chance to look at them for too long because suddenly the illusion on Snarla herself is dropped and she has tangled, matted hair, disheveled robe, not much more on than that. 
made of like hemp spun linen sort of thing. And she has this wicked looking scar across her face as though five claws raked across the front of her face, disfiguring her quite brutally. She's not wearing any shoes. Her toenails are long and jagged, and she definitely looks very, very depressed, unhappy, sad, and worn down. And you remember, vaguely, something on the night that Snarla disappeared, a howl that broke the night at some point when Snarla was gone, and Snarla did not have those scars upon her then. Your magical abilities are astounding, and I would love to learn from you someday. Thanks, you know, yeah, I try. Would you mind if we went into the room and looked around? Sure, why not? She kind of just cuddles into the shoulder and bicep and pectoral muscle of Burkett, and he wraps his arm around her and holds her. He has not changed at all. He's still exactly as he was, (sighs) but she is definitely crumbled you can see as you pass the desk there's not really a desk a little bench table sort of thing with the candelabra on it the glowing light of this room there's a thick bound book there um it looks like it is a snarla's spell book because it definitely has the look of a spell book about it you walk into the room and you can see in the corners of each wall are four sigils they are the same sigils on all four walls but each sigil in each corner is different from the other in some sort of runic language of magic neither snarla nor burkett actually can see these sigils they do not appear to them they do not have the power to perceive these Mm -hmm. sigils on the walls but other than that and the chest there's nothing else in this room and the chest appeared to be exactly as they described it and it's only full of money you haven't opened it yet I'll open it. Burkett says, you shouldn't do that. It's trapped. Ah, uh, I'd appreciate you letting us know. Yeah, yeah. It's big stinking cloud of nauseous gas will come out. And it is only money in this chest. Let me tell you, it's uh, it's like, four, it's what, about 2,000 gold, but that's about it in there. Gems and such. Mm. Can I take a closer look at the sigils? Make an arcana check. Oh, 17. They are runes. Ah, shoot. Of magic. And I can't see. No, you room. can see them. Only oh. Snarla and Burkett can't see them when you bring it oh, up to okay. them. You can see them. Would but, you like to make an arcana check? No. Why don't you? Go ahead. Make an a, arcana let's check. Do it. I have a negative one. Exactly. You have failed. Four. <laughs> <laughs> this is a waste of time. I know, but it's fun. You get to roll dice. Yeah, but. Isn't that what this is all about? Not particularly. <laughs> Would you like to also make an arcana check, Thesis Phase? to determine if these were okay (laughs) you have failed the dc for this check not that you now that you've all rolled no one has spent their flash of genius on it oh son of a gun (laughs) i'm gonna spend a flash of genius on myself (laughs) just because you want to increase your lore knowledge of this dungeon it's not going to help you much in any other given way i'm going to give you this Uh blue gem as you spend it now crack the 20 mark that you needed to get it because i think it puts you to 21 yes it does so at a 21 that is just enough to know that these runes are permanent runes in this room that prohibit memories from being accessed by certain individuals who are in this room for any length of time And because they live and sleep in here, basically they're not able to remember anything. There is a code word that's said at the start and at the end. And then anything that's said and anything experienced during the duration of that code word is not memorable to the people. What's the code word? That you're not able to discern and determine. This is just the end result of the spell. Also, you're looking at like, 18th to 20th level magic. I will, as good faith, relay that information to these two individuals so at least they understand why their memories are gone. So they're both extremely upset and like, what are you talking about? But within three minutes of you having brought it up, their umbrage and their animosity and anger 
fades. And if you question them, they don't remember that you brought it up. Interesting. But they remember everything about themselves, like that they like each other, love each other. Yes. And they remember us being here and why we're Absolutely. here. Absolutely. They remember you and why you're here and all the awesome things. But if you brought up the sigils, the they just have no... It doesn't stick. That's too bad. Mm-hmm. It doesn't transition from short-term memory to long-term memory. Mm. Well, I tried. What did you try? <laughs> I got to do that again. It's so bad. <laughs> nope. I'm not even... Nope. I can't get there. That- I, it's gone. <laughs> No, that sounds like child from the South. I, because mm, he doesn't want to lie to them, but at the same time doesn't want to get into this constant circle of explaining it, them forgetting and explaining it. Yeah. <laughs> I just attempted something and it unfortunately did not work. That's all. Okay. Your room passed its inspection. I am very curious to see you use your magical abilities to rebuild what you have created. It is very impressive. That's good to hear. And I believe we can move on to our next phase and attempt to try and free your friends so that they can live their lives outside these walls. Make a formal request to the manager. Thank you so much, Le- young miss. Hope you make, it, make your way out. Anything for you. He pats you on the head as he would when you were a kid. Which, it's, a, it's a dull sound. Yeah. I'm awfully sorry what happened to you. You always were a bright kid and real pretty. Before we head out, are you able to show us the footwear and the items that you use to get through the dungeon and the materials that are used on them? Sure. They show you those things, but they're only for that one room and that other one room. Can we copy them and create them to make it easier to get through the rooms? You'll you won't have to go back through those rooms ever again. Oh, I thought that the uh, the door was on the other side of the spinning thing. It's not. You'll have to go back through the spinning thing. Yeah, I thought they had shoes that got them through the spinning. No, they've no shoes that the get glidey them through room, the gliding room, the Teflon room. I mean, we'll have to go back for Black Razor, but like that's like day du bon, I suppose. Well, and we know how now. Yeah, just fly. <laughs> it's just easier if you just fly. He says. Uh, if you're concerned about the spinny room, you can just go over here, and then he goes over where the arrow sled is, and he can pull the big lever, and it stops. He says, it only stops for about 20 seconds, and then it starts back up again. That is very useful. I was going to shoot you with um, this bow and arrow, some flame on it, because that oil in there is real combustible, but then I recognized the new version of Thesis, and I thought better of it it is very appreciative thank you thesis for knowing these individuals in other words i would have killed all three of you because this is a very high level wizard that snarla is Mm. and the dude is a veteran knight and he's skilled like arrow and sword plus the fire and all the other stuff that was going to happen. Although you would have been fine. Like the spells that Snarla has are just insane. Mm-hmm. Plus when Snarla runs out of spells or it looks like it's going badly, what does Snarla do? Read the book. Turns into a freaking werewolf. Cool. I, I wrote werewolf in the book. Yes, good. <laughs> I wrote werewolf you made, equals you made the scar. Good, yep, Snarla is a werewolf. That's what happened to Snarla, Snarla but you didn't Snarl. find that out. Oh, that's funny. I know. So... It was like it was destined to happen. This poor, I'm okay. Fran Drescher esque. Yeah, I'm okay with releasing a werewolf into the wild. That's fine. No problems. We'll, we won't run into any unforeseen problems in the future when we do that. It's a debilitative disease, and you should salute. Shouldn't judge. It's fine. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales, a curated Dungeons & Dragons 5e game set in the Tales of the Yawning Portal adventure module by Wizards of the Coast. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at badbillyband. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at tavern underscore tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure. That is true.
Yeah. Think of like an American Italian. I'm trying. I mean, you're pretty jot like when you do it. Hey, give me a meatball sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I am taking offense to that. <laughs> Is that what you Just like? Just think cake box. No. How many meatball sandwiches cake have you boss. had? I've had once or twice. That's about the number I've hey, ever bada had boom, too. bada bing. Hey. I, yeah, I didn't want to go that far because he's still <laughs> freaking George Thompson the butler. That's the footman. I'm like, ah, it's hard to juxtapose picturing George Thompson being proper and a nice and a footman guy and then being like, hey, oh. Yeah, that's a hard right? thing to mix. So I have to think New York door, door guy because mm-hmm. they're all proper. You got that right, young miss. Susan, what? It, you're, you're, you drifted into Australia. <laughs> Good eye, miss. It wasn't the start. It was like the, the yeah. end. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do anything anymore. Ever. No. <laughs> quite a bit. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. I'm Cockney now. <laughs> so much easier to do that voice if I wished to. <laughs> Looked after young miss quite a lot. That's not the same either. Now I'm Australian. <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? I don't think we're going to have our last session on the 25th. No, we won't. <laughs> oh Looked after. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can you please leave all of this in? Yeah, can you put this at the end of the episode? <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> oh. I hate, I hate my brain. I keep picking up my water and being like, a little more caffeine will probably help. It doesn't. Are you okay? I want to be like Christopher from The Sopranos. It's really the one I really wanted to go for there. I've never seen it. I've- you should definitely watch The Sopranos. The Sopranos. <laughs>